Hello, everyone. I'm Charlie Claxton, Senior Vice President and Global Head of Design for Thomson Reuters, so thanks for having me. We are an AI and technology-focused company. We're giving professionals the confidence to know today to navigate tomorrow. Our primary audiences are legal and tax professionals from the small mom and pop shops to the large global corporate entities. And we have a 150 year track record of customer centric innovation, starting with this. No, it's not our first customer, but it's an early example of how early on we innovated on behalf of solving customer problems. So the year is 1850. The telegraph is gaining traction and sharing information, but there's still some gaps in the networks between Germany and Belgium. A young Julius Reuters sees an opportunity. He sends carrier pigeons by rail to Belgium. Once in Belgium, these little tiny silken bags are tied around the neck of the pigeon, and inside there is tiny ribbons of tissue paper with the local stocks and bonds from the stock market. Next, the pigeons fly swiftly to their dovecotes in Aachen, where Julius, his wife, and two others copy the piece of paper by hand and distribute it to their local subscribers. This allows their customers to receive the local market information in a couple hours where the rail takes about six. Pigeon Post, as it was called, grew from about 45 pigeons to close to 200 in the course of a year before some of the new telegraph connections rendered it obsolete. And even though the new technology dates back more than 100 years, it still had to contend with the distributed denial of service attacks that could stop the business in its tracks. Falcons. And so, you know, 150 years later, we still continue to innovate on the foundation of speed, but more importantly, accuracy and trust. Today, Thomson Reuters is a global organization. We have more than 25,000 employees in hundreds of locations around the world. We have about 500,000 customers and are number one and number two in the legal, corporate, tax, and news segments. 97% of AMLA 100 firms in the US use Westlaw. It's one of our flagship products. All of the top 100 US CPA firms are Thomson Reuters customers. All big four accounting firms use Thomson Reuters for their own tax returns. And nearly a billion people consume Reuters news every day worldwide. Our mission is to help professionals do complex and substantive work more efficiently, think less time and cost and better, think uh, higher accuracy and better client results. But this isn't just about solving things that naturally come up in the evolution of a particular industry, but helping these organizations deal with the external factors that affect the way we work, the evolving competitive landscapes, new technologies, COVID, I'm sure the last one is one that we would, many of us would soon rather forget. It was, it was disruptive on many levels. It threw curveballs at every industry. Overnight, we were forced to work from home where new disruptions were a part of life. It changed the way everyone worked, and this disruption was especially true for our legal customers who typically worked in person and in court. They were forced to learn new ways of working, and we were right there alongside with them, helping them navigate their new headwinds. These pressures were still, uh, um, the pressures were still there. Oh, poor Robert. You could argue some were more amplified than others. And so when you look at our legal customers, you can see that they were seeing an ever-increasing volume of laws and regulations. They were seeing greater demand from general counsels for value, and at the same time, they were seeing increased competition from lower cost of employees. There was also the hybrid working environment and increased salaries and all the different moving things that were happening. And our legal customers, they were actively looking for ways to reduce these pressures. But what was interesting is how much they were more open to the newer technologies, albeit cautiously open. Much like COVID was disruptive, AI was there and starting to shake things up. To our customers, AI was a potentially new tool for them, but it wasn't new for us. We've had a lot of experience with natural language processing, NLP, and AI. And back in 1996, we introduced the History Assistant, which was a large-scale NLP system that analyzed court law. It extracted parties and, uh, parties and judges. It built the appellate chain and for particular cases. And you know that was almost 30 years ago, and it was groundbreaking at the time. But it's not something we really talked about, because like I said, our, 
our customers are overly cautious on the new things. Now, in part, thanks to COVID and accelerated pressures, our, our customers were open to it. And today, our customers are even asking us what we're doing with AI, given all the hype. And given our history with NLP and AI, and much like Julius did over 100 years ago, we saw a clear opportunity to solve our customers' work and customers' pain points, one that could reimagine how they work. Today, we are tailor-making Gen AI solutions to read, process, and generate complex language. Those are things that are all core to legal work. We're introducing new ways of working that starts with AI and then is refined by humans across workflows. We're bringing together the distinct parts of Thomson Reuters, authoritative content, workflow software, and Gen AI. Our customers are seeing increased efficiency and higher quality work output. But like I said, our customers were cautious, and it, it makes sense. Research out of Stanford found that large language models hallucinate at least 75% of the time when answering questions about a legal court case. So uh, we lost the case. Um, looks like you're facing jail time. Uh, good news is the company we buy our legal software is really innovative. I promise you that's not going to go over well for your customers. And so instead of us being the first out of the gate with our Gen AI offering, we, offered, we were working on focusing on ensuring that our customers could trust what they get from TR. This was in how we built and refined our models. It's how we framed our responses. It's how we cite the sources that are leveraged to create the answers. And we're honest when we don't have the answer. But as you look around the room, we aren't the only ones that are actively injecting Gen AI into our products. This is one area we really can't hire or buy our way out of. It takes upscaling our existing teams and while at the same time ensuring we're working on the most important and impactful customer problems. So how do you align focus to support uncovering opportunities? One way which we use is a framework called the Customer Experience Outcomes. And so let me give you a little glimpse on how that works. We started with our customers' most important jobs to be done, especially ones that transcend multiple products or multiple parts of a single product, because those are the ones where we find add the most surface area for friction. Next, we align them along the life cycle of our customers' engagements with our products. Then using a custom dashboard, highlighted in red, yellow, and green, how we're doing, this allows us to see where there's some friction points quickly. Each one of these, skills, uh, each one of these tiles are interactive, so clicking on one brings us into more detail, allows us to dive deeper into specific areas for more detail and content. By the way, this one is for, this is our CXO for the drafting of a process of a legal document. And so each CXO, it, it measures across usage. So how effective our product and our services are at helping our customers complete their jobs. Next is on usability. How easy was it to complete the job? And then satisfaction, whether the products or services created a positive experience. From here, we then evaluate if the friction points are best solvable with some aspect of AI. The collective results are better solutions for our customers, but so what do we land on? Drawing on insights from our CXO framework that helped inform numerous design and product decisions. It helped the team focus on customer friction and not the technology. Our solution seamlessly integrated our rich, trusted content directly into the drafting workflow. It also shaped our external partnerships we formed and it helped us deliver experiences and met our customers where they are. The capabilities are great, but the real proof is in the pudding. On November 15th of, that, of last year, we launched our Gen AI offering into our flagship product, Westlaw. And today, just five months later, we have three Gen AI products in market and some wonderful stats. But we're not done. Along with introducing Gen AI into more places in our product portfolio, we're in the process of launching our Gen AI solutions internationally. So to wrap up a few lessons we've learned along the way, invest in your teams and foster a culture of innovation and experimentation. Like I said, you cannot buy your way into a great position. Focus on the customer, not the technology. Get at the root of the customer problem first and then layer on the technology. If you just start with the technology, you greatly increase your risk of building something that's nice and shiny and nobody uses. And so whether it's something like the customer experience outcomes framework that we use or another mechanism, be detail-oriented about the customer experience and aim at building habitual experiences. 
to me, habitual experiences are things that we just do. We don't really think about it. They're sort of seamless in your day-to-day -day life. It's something that's second nature. And so, you know, while pigeons aren't a part of our product offering anymore, uh, we still are laser focused on clarifying complexity and getting at the heart of our customers' problems and solving their challenges. And that's helping keeping us in a leading position for more than a century. And I'm excited where it takes us next. Thank you.